Um, are you ready? Okay, so I think we took time. Um, shall we start? Again, um, if you encounter some network problem, question, and so on, uh, just send me a message via WeChat. Um, so, yeah. So, one thing I need to mention about this so, in problem uh, two, in homework two, uh, in Lagrangian, miss is the 5 volt term. So, I have added and then put the new version of the problem in the even e learning and also this this widget proof so please uh, be careful uh, when you solve the problem okay so that's the one um, today we will continue to learn our renormalization uh, more conceptual way um, so the last time we in, uh, introduced a so called um, so power counting and also um, Renormalize Lagrangian with counter term. So today uh, we will introduce the intrinsic way, uh, meaning of renormalization. What's on? What's on? Effective action and uh, renormalization. Uh, renormalization. Um, so what Wilson did, did is he um, tell, told us as follows. So essentially, so um, so renormalization um, is not. Uh, trick um, to um, to remove remove um, the infinity infinity or divergence divergence and also moreover. Uh, so and people often write RG flow. RG flow is not a proof. Not um, proof. So it's very unfortunate. So it's a renormalization proof flow. Uh, it's called. Uh, but uh, it's not. It doesn't form a group. I'm going to explain what the uh, two sentence means. Um, so, so, uh, so, so far, uh, we just introduced concept term that looks like to remove the infinity, but that's not the case. Uh, that's what Wilson told us. Um, so, and also. Renormalization group flow means that the um, so Kaplan constant or mass uh, in the um, Lagrangian depends on the scale you measure. So then, so that form uh, that gives you the dependence on the scale that is called RG flow, but it, it doesn't form group. So that's why I'm going to explain what it means. Um, unfortunately, uh, many how to say. Uh, first learner uh, misunderstood what the renormalization or RG, uh, renormalization group means, but uh, you have to be careful with these two points. So, what was on your effective action? Uh, to explain it, uh, what's on your effective action? So, let's start uh, the uh, d dimensional. D dimensional. So, so, I'm going to explain Euclidean. But you can easily go to the uh, 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 Minkowski signature by using a weak location. Um, um, Lagrangian. So L is given by uh, something like one half pressure phi 
Lagrange at half. Or for instance, you can just take the following from the Lagrangian um, plus lambda over 4 prime by the um, so one can consider such a uh, Lagrangian, for instance, for instance, e g. Um, yeah. And you just consider the path integral Lagrangian, so it's called bare Lagrangian. Um, yeah, so, so, so this is at the scale, at the scale. And the it's a high energy scale. So that's bare Lagrangian. So essentially you just have zero, zero, and zero, and zero, and zero. And you just consider the, the partition function, which is a, takes the following form. Um, e to the minus um, e to the x Euclidean Lagrangian. That's the um, so Lagrangian we are thinking about, but here we just integrate over only so up to lambda zero, which means that the so momentum k absolute value has to be uh, in this range. Okay. So the Lagrangian theory is defined at the um, Lagrangian defined at scale lambda zero. The, the path integral is defined uh, in the range that the in the range that the momentum is zero to lambda zero. Okay. Then, um, so we are trying to perform the following uh, following integral. So suppose we just uh, go below a little bit the scale, decrease the scale lambda zero to uh, lambda, which is b times uh, lambda zero. Where b is um, somewhere between uh, zero to uh, one, so that the so if you start, so there is a k here. Um, uh, so there is a k here. It starts from zero, and then the theory is defined at the lambda zero. But you just want to um, go below uh, the scale a little bit. Uh, so this is lambda. Which is b lambda b, b. and what we are going to do is uh, since we look, we want to look at the physics at, at here, so that so that point, um, we're just going to integrate it out the mode in in the range between here. So here we are going to uh, integrate it, integrate out. Um, the degrees of freedom, degree of freedom in the range um, lambda, um, the k is uh, lambda zero to lambda. So that's what, what we are going to do. So to do that, uh, to this end, uh, we just decompose the following way. Uh, phi, um, phi tilde of k is phi k plus phi hat k. So we decompose like this way. So we uh, here now we already move to the momentum uh, space instead of just uh, position space based on position where um, phi hat is zero um, zero. Lambda and then by um, theta of k, where the um, lambda uh, k um, lambda zero, and also phi of k is uh, the other one. So phi theta of k zero. So the um, Uh, so we decompose uh, 
the the criteria in, into the uh, the range. PyHat is only take care of the range in in this in in, in this region. And also uh, just normal file, it just uh, take uh, represents the region between zero to one. And we want to write down the Lagrangian in terms of phi instead of phi theta. Phi theta take care of the range from zero to lambda zero, but phi just take care of the, the, the theta in the range between zero to lambda. And we just want to integrate the uh, phi hat. So to do that, uh, I'm just going to write the, the partition function um, in the following way. So d is equal to um, e phi e phi theta. Now I already moved to the uh, momentum space. Um, um, e to the uh, minus dx e one half partial phi plus partial phi theta square. Um, I'm sorry, phi half. Um, sorry, sorry, phi half. So I think I think I have to be careful about how to write that. This is half, and this is half, and this is theta. Okay. Um, so I just decompose in the following way. So I just because I just decompose. Um, yeah, I mean here. So this this theorem means that you just go to the, the um, bare field to the momentum space, okay? Momentum space. So the phi zero goes to the momentum space. That I'm, uh, write, I write. I just write down the phi theta. So just write down in terms of everything in terms of um, phi and phi hat. So the essentially you get the n square phi plus phi hat square, and it's going on. Um, Plus lambda for factorial um, phi plus phi hat. So everything in the exponent. Okay. So I just write down, I think, exponent right here. So. Okay, so then, so this can be decomposed into the following way. Um, so e phi. And the usual Lagrangian uh, e to the minus uh, d d x e um, um, one half partial phi square plus one half n square phi square, and also oh my goodness plus four factorial lambda phi to the fourth. So this is one one thing. And another thing is uh, d by hat and e to the uh, minus i uh, d d um, x e Lagrangian uh, Lagrangian hat. And I'm going to write down Lagrangian hat uh, in here. So Lagrangian hat. Is equal to um, the following. So one half partial phi hat square, and then plus one half n square phi hat square plus uh, lambda to the four factorial um, four factorial phi hat to the fourth plus. Uh, Network seems not good today. Oh. Okay, uh, just a moment. Let, let, let me finish writing down. Uh, lambda over 6, 5, and 5 half. Um, 5 half cube plus lambda 4, 5, 5 half square square, and plus. Lambda over six phi to the cube phi hat. Okay. So this is the uh, lambda hat, and then so so gen 
general mesh network is seems not good today. Okay, let me try to improve in that case. Uh, just a moment. Let me try to improve. Um, Okay, I hope network gets better. Let, let. Okay, thanks for letting me know. I mean, it, just tell me if it improved or not. Let's see if it is improved. I try to improve, but let, 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 let me know if it gets better or not. Okay, so, so that's I just decompose the mode from uh, zero to lambda and the lambda to lambda naught, like uh, uh, in the following way, the phi and the phi hat. And what we want to do is just integrate out. So the integrate out means you just want to perform this uh, path, this path integral. Integrate out means the in to perform this uh, path integral. So this is uh, the integral that perform integral. Perform this integral. Carry out this the high momentum mode, high momentum mode. Integration over high momentum mode in a path integral. And that's what we want to do. And now, uh, to this end, so we just, so essentially, so what we did is as follows. So we just write down Z is the um, D phi, um, yeah, so, so Z D phi of lambda e to the um, minus S of phi and the D I hat, which is the uh, lambda k lambda naught e to the minus uh, s hat okay, of phi and phi hat. Okay. Uh, does, the network, does the network get better? I'm not sure if it is okay. Just tell me. Is it okay now? I hope it's okay. J j just tell me. Okay. Um. Okay, so let me move on. Um, and we just want to perform uh, this part. Perform the path in of this part. Um, So if you assume, um, if you assume the, um, so we want to treat, so this, this is a kinetic term for uh, pi hat, and also a uh, kinetic term, and this can, this can be interaction term between uh, pi hat and pi, okay? And we assume that the lambda, we assume uh, lambda is very small, and also mass of the uh, this particle scalar particle is less much smaller than the, the, the scale we are looking at. Then we can apply for the perturbation theory so that the this uh, this part this um, so this part so this part is equal to um, you can just write down that as follows. Um, D phi hat e to the minus uh, the e x. So you have just kinetic term. And then, so you just expand by kinetic expansion by, by applying the perturbation theory. I mean, e. um, and one half 
M prime hat M. I had square and plus lambda for factorial. I had the fourth plus um, lambda over six um, by I had q and so on. So you just plug this one, this part into here. So um, so this part is just a this one. and so on. And this is first order by just. But you just do the tail expansion e to the i, e to the, e to the x. So this is the first term, and then you have a second term, third term, and so on. Okay, and for instance, um, if we just want to perform this integral. To do that, uh, just first let's look at the term like a uh, um, uh, term like this one. Term like this one. So, so we, as I mentioned, so we assume the the the, the coupling constant and mass is very small, so that if if you uh, expand the e to the minus x by Taylor expansion, uh, the, the if you go to the subleading term, it becomes negligible because I mean you just have lambda to the square and to the square and so on. Um, Ah, oh, sorry, and square m to the fourth and so on, so that the 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 subleading order becomes uh, like a, like a less important. So that so that the let's first look at the first uh, uh, leading order, uh, and for instance, uh, one can just perform minus uh, d. So so you just consider it's a Lagrangian, it's a free theory with uh, uh, with with some correlation function. Let's first look at the, the term of here coming from here, d d uh, x e lambda over four uh, pi square pi hat square and this one. So this can be understood as the um, as I mentioned in, in partition function, you just see, you can insert operator like this one into the uh, in pattern which give you the uh, Expectation value, so which is can be understood as follows, um, which can be understood as um, follows: uh, d dx, oh, sorry, uh, d pi e to the minus uh, d dx e along half function pi half square, and this you just insert. Uh, minus dx um, lambda four by x square by hat square. Okay, so that's, okay, so that's what you get, and then. And you just want to perform, oh, sorry, so this is by hat. You just want to perform the d by hat integral. And as you know, so if you have the pi hat square, this will give you the, um, this part, the pi hat square, will give you the following integral. So this part will give you the following integral. So d uh, k over 2 pi over k, and as uh, we know, so it's it's a free theory. So the free theory, so the propagator is massless k square. Okay? Um, but you have to integrate over the integration range is we already assume that the phi has only non-zero where the k is in this range. Okay? So so that the um, one can just perform this integral, this will give you just uh, this will give you the um, the following form. So this will give you uh, the dx. Um, minus one half pi square of x and mean. 
So that's called this one, this is this is the one. So if you perform this uh, the integral, so this is equal to um, lambda over four pi d over two gamma d over two. Uh, I mean, you can just uh, apply the, this Dirac formalism um, one minus d d minus two uh, d minus two gamma. Um, so from just let's integrate out the mode by half square, you get this uh, this one. So let's call let's define this is equal to uh, mu. Mu. Yeah. So that one. So once you integrate out by half mode, in here what you get, you just get uh, this. Uh, this, this, um, so we even don't need by hat actually. We uh, uh, this the expression by because we already integrated by hat mode. Okay, what's left is only phi square. So it's no longer, um, it's no longer the in, inside of half integral. So it just give you the, uh, the um, this, this, this integral. So in diagonal, one can just write down as follows. Uh, so this will give you the something like a, this one. So um, so this is phi and phi, and this uh, double roof is stands for phi hat square. Phi hat square. And so this double line means the uh, for phi hat. And you just integrate out from uh, the momentum mode from lambda to lambda zero, and you, what you get is some number mu. And for instance, one can do this uh, similar uh, thing for the uh, this sublating order. Um, and for instance, if you look at sublating order, uh, so you, you can always have something like this one. Uh, you can just combine so these two okay, phi square. Uh, I, I'm just going to do the schematic. Uh, so essentially, d x and uh, uh, d y plus d phi square phi hat square of x and phi square um, phi hat square of y. Okay? And there is some numerical coefficient. Due to the um, due to the uh, four factor four square due to the um, tail expansion, so this can be understood as the diagonally. So you, you get the uh, the square plus. Another thing is the something like this one. So the one thing you can just decompose in two ways, like I like I did here, like I did here. So you just decompose uh, the just in one block and two block. Uh, the second, first block and second block that would give you just this square. But you can just combine phi hat x and phi hat y, so that, that would give propagator here. And another phi hat x and phi hat y will give you propagator. And this will give you the correction to the phi. Uh, if you, uh, after integral of this double line, what you will end up with is phi square and phi square. Okay? So that uh, you get the phi to the fourth term, the correction to phi to the fourth term. Um, so this will give you the something like uh, um, this will give you. So I'm going to sorry, I'm going to erase this part. The term after integrate out this uh, the double line, what you will get is uh, dx dy and phi square of x phi square of y, and this will give you. Um, is equal to uh, d x uh, 
by uh, 4 to the x by just doing a pair expansion plus some constant some constant by square of x partial phi of x square and so on. You just do the pair expansion of the phi square of y in terms uh, around the x point x. Uh, furthermore, one can do the more perform the more integral. So that means where can I erase? I think I can erase this part. Um, so if you look at the uh, sublinear, uh, the second order, so and then look at the, the contribution from uh, here. So for instance, uh, so the, I just write down schematically. One over four, uh, lambda of six square, and then uh, dx dy um, by cube by hat x and by cube by hat of y. Okay. And this is diagonally. Uh, you can just write uh, as you can easily imagine that the. Um, I think uh, I just let, let me write down more explicitly. Okay. Double line and so uh, so these three points come from this phi cube, and these three line uh, come from phi cube here, and the phi hat phi hat will give you a double line property. So therefore, if you want to integrate out this um, double line. You will get um, this will give you uh, essentially d uh, this will give you um, d d x uh, pi uh, pi to the six of x plus the correction term. Okay. Essentially, uh, again, you have to start with pi to the cube x and pi to the force um, uh, y. I'm uh, sorry, pi to the cube. Y and it just do the tail expansion by Q around the point X and then the linear term by the Q. So therefore, uh, once you perform this integrate up on the high momentum, uh, high momentum mode, what you will get is as follows. So you just perform this integral, and then what you will get is roughly as follows. I'm going to erase this part. So after integrating out all this double line, double line, uh, you will get the so-called effective actions, where they um, so this this perform this pi hat integral C can be written as follows: uh, lambda e to the minus s uh, effective. Uh, it used to be, it used to be something like a d phi of lambda, uh, d phi of lambda, e to the minus s of phi, and then d phi hat, and I'm, so lambda k lambda naught e to the minus s hat phi phi hat. Okay, and it's just basic by integrating out this uh, phi hat mode. Can be just uh, squeeze everything into the uh, S and this integrated R can be just squeezed into the S effective action. So this is called effective action, Wilsonian effective action. Where this S of effective, S of effective can be written as follows uh, the EDX of Lagrangian, effective Lagrangian, which can be written as dx uh, one half fun plus delta p. Okay. Um, and kinetic terms is a correction by uh, square. And also, you have a correction in mass term. Um, by square. Let me erase this one. Uh, 
um, by SCAR, and also uh, it has the correction to the by force term that the lambda by the force. Okay? And plus, and so this is a correction. And plus, there's a bunch of correction terms, something like a um, delta C by the, to the force, and plus delta D by the six, for instance. So as I, as we have seen, so this uh, the effect of the integral the pi hat in this this uh, the subleading, so the second order uh, perturbation term will give you the uh, phi to the six term. So there's a phi to the six term which shows. Um, and also, as we have seen, um, so this delta lambda leading correction come from uh, here, okay? Um, come from here, so that the delta lambda is coming from this diagram. And also, we can have another uh, term like a pi square, partial pi square. So also, A, B, C, D, E, delta E, something like a pi square, partial pi square. So these are uh, by integrating out um, the high momentum mode. Uh, so you can see the effective action at the scale lambda, at the scale lambda, which is v times lambda. Okay? So that the you have a correction to the uh, mass and the peak. Uh, the renormalization and then um, by force term correction. In addition to that, you have a bunch of um, you can have a bunch of another additional um, terms in the function. So this is called Wilsonian effective action. So this this action is called Wilsonian effective action. Okay, so that's the um, the effect of okay. So, so somehow is a network it looks like a network gets better. I hope now it's okay. Um, so this is the the effect of integrating out the um, the high moment mode, and we can just compute this correction term. Correction term by perturbatively. Uh, perturbatively. So this is correction term can be computed, and this can be computed. So this can be computed. Any questions so far? So that's the essence of Wilsonian action. So you just start from uh, like Lagrangian at the uh, bare Lagrangian and just integrate out the high momentum mode, and you get the Lagrangian effective Lagrangian at the scale lambda. And this correction can be computed perturbatively. So that's the essence of the um, um, the the with some idea. Okay, so that's the. Um, so let me. I think I want to keep this one. So that's the race. This part. Um, So one can repackage this as effective action in the following way. So this this is expression can be written as follows. So S lambda effective K 
can be understood as VBX. And then uh, from half partial uh, time, um, let's see, by, um, um, let's call phi, plus from half and prime square, and phi prime. And this prime doesn't mean the, it's, it's derivative, it doesn't mean anything, it's just the out of here. Um, just really finishing of the um, um, um. <sighs> okay, then so on. Where the n prime can be understood n square plus delta n square from plus delta t inverse and then lambda prime is lambda plus delta lambda and the same part inverse and c plus t prime is also the same c plus delta c inverse uh, d plus delta t inverse and also of course in the, the value mentioned doesn't have a c and d c and d are equal uh, equal to d but um, in or, original, like an original version. But just, I mean, just formally write down the capital C and capital D and so on. And, so on. and also E and so on. Okay. Um, so that the, the effect of integrated out um, the high moment of mole is just a redefinition of field phi and also um, the the Kaplan constant, Kaplan constant. So the Kaplan constant also depends on the scale of you measure lambda. Okay? From at the scale lambda uh, lambda naught, you have this n. Strictly speaking, I have to write that in zero, but I'm going to omit. You have n lambda, but if you just integrate it out, integrate it out the high momentum mode. At the lambda, you get an n prime and lambda prime. Okay? So the value will change. Okay? So this the 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 effective integral and then the, the change of coupling constant uh, is is called a renormalization group flow. So this change of coupling constant or mass parameter, but by the at the scale uh, is as the, as you change the scale. It's called renormalization uh, RG flow. And as you can easily see that they, you can just get n prime and lambda prime by integrating out uh, the high momentum mode from the uh, bare Lagrangian, but you cannot get uh, n lambda from n prime and lambda prime. You cannot restore the data. You cannot restore the data, so you just do not inverse. So therefore, it's, it doesn't uh, form the group. The group, if you, if you consider group, group G, if you have an uh, element G, the mass exists at G inverse. Okay? So if G is uh, the, 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 the um, operation that map from lam n lambda to n prime lambda prime, there must be the element of G inverse. Go from M prime lambda prime to M, M lambda. There, there are no such operation. You cannot restore the data. Because you just integrate it out. You just lose the data. Okay. But uh, it doesn't form the group. Okay, so that's the the um yeah, so that's the essence of the renormalization group flow by Wilson. Uh, let me, for instance, one can just compute uh, the, the effect of this uh, delta uh, integrate at the high, high momentum ball mode for phi to the fourth term by computing this diagram, for instance. Um, so as you know, um, so what I want to compute is this diagram. 
So this um, can be computed as follows. Um, so, so this can be understood as minus 4 factorial lambda over 4 spur and the uk um, 2 pi over d and one over okay, spur and spur. So you have uh, the two vertex will give you lambda over 4 spur here. The four factor accounts are always this. Uh, oh my goodness, I missed lambda to the fourth here. I'm sorry. I missed lambda to the fourth. Sorry. You, you should tell me. Uh, by the WeChat. So this four factorial cancel this four factorial. And uh, so now here it's the high momentum uh, mode, which is the which I understood as the um uh, massless uh, uh, mode. Because I mean M is much much less than the, 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 the lambda. So you can just assume that it can be it's massless mode. So you can ignore the mass. Okay. So therefore, the propagator from here is you get the one over k square, and the propagator in, uh, in the bottom, you get the one over k square, you get the, at the end of the day, you get the one over k square, square. Okay. Um, so that's what you get, and you just need to perform uh, the integral in the region of like this thing, uh, lambda and uh, lambda. So this, and you just do this, same computation, what you will get is minus 3 lambda spur uh, 2 pi, I'm uh, sorry, 4 pi d over 2. Uh, we did many times the value dimension of realization and so on. Um, and then uh, 1 minus d, d minus 4 divided by d minus 4, and then cut out lambda d minus 4. Okay, this is minus and a minus sign. Okay. So, of course, I assume B is the uh, B, B lambda not is equal to one. Uh, so that the uh, this can be, and if you take D goes to four limit, uh, this can be written in terms of minus three lambda square. 16 times square and log 1 over k. Okay. Uh, if you take the equals to um, So therefore, at the one loop contribution, so this is a one loop co uh, correction, so the delta lambda is equal to uh, minus at the one loop. One loop. Is minus three lambda square, sixteen pi square, log one over b. And you have to remember this one. Uh, I'm not, I'm not sure if you take note, but you just keep this uh, value. So this becomes important at the end of the uh, lecture. Okay, so that's the. Um, so you will get, and then. Uh, And last time, um, so the last time I just explained delta z in FICO theory is zero at one loop. Okay. So the last lecture, I, we just compute delta z equals zero. So which means that this will give you, I just give, I, I'm going to uh, review this this part later, but you have to assume that the delta is zero at one loop. So this z, delta z is exactly the the field uh, field renormalization. So the uh, wave function renormalization. Sorry, wave function renormalization. So that delta z is responsible for that. Uh, this small delta z is from big delta z. Um, so therefore, at the one loop, delta z is zero, 
uh, feature I'm going to explain a bit more detail later, and I'm going to erase this part. Now for uh, lambda, small lambda, topic constant of lambda, that depends on the scale you measure, capital lambda, is equal to lambda lambda naught. So the capital lambda is scale, small lambda is the um, log. We just plug this this one into here, into here, and just compare with uh, the lambda and lambda prime. Essentially, this is lambda prime and this is lambda in, 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 in here, okay. in here. So that's what you get the dependence. So so therefore, so this coupling constant uh, small lambda depends on the scale you measure. And dependence, uh, this is one of correction. So this is one of correction. Now this is uh, one of correction. Okay. Um, so therefore, so the, the very interesting fact. So as you know, Lagrangian in 4D, uh, D is good for Lagrangian, very Lagrangian, in classically, is something like a partial phi square plus in, 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 in Euclidean, I'm writing a Euclidean theory, uh, uh, for factorial fiber force. This is scale environment. It's a, oh my goodness. Um, okay, I, I'm, not, I'm not gonna explain this at this moment. So scale environment is, is different. So that's that, anyway, so uh, let's. Um, so this is the, okay, let, let, let me explain now. So the equal to four. So if you take the massless limit, and massless lambda. So lambda naught is something like a uh, partial phi square plus uh, lambda for factorial uh, phi to the fourth. Okay. So this is massless means the m equals zero. Okay. Uh, then, um, so the action uh, is the uh, scale environment. The action is scale environment. Scale so environment means that the uh, if you take um, phi is something like a, a L phi and x goes to uh, whatever L, L inverse of phi, uh, x. Okay. L inverse of x. So phi has mass dimension one, x has a mass dimension uh, minus one. So therefore exponent is y and y is inverse. So then, action is environment. This action is action is v before x l naught is invariant under the, the scale environments because l naught, as you can easily see from here, l naught is um, goes to l to the fourth l naught, and also we have a measure here d before is moved to the um, the uh, d four x is moved to l minus four d four x. Okay, but now for uh, l naught and the d four x, the power cancel. Okay, so that the um, it's invariant on the scale environment. Okay, scale environment. If you change, so change the scale from the length x to a bit l inverse. Okay, so this is called scale scale transformation. Uh, scaling transformation. The classical is environment. But uh, if you look at the uh, loop correction, so of course, uh, it, coupling constant lambda depends on the scale okay, you measure, capital lambda. So therefore, classically, massless FIFO theory is scaling the environment, but quantum mechanical is not. Okay. That's the. Um, um, <laughs> 
the uh, mysterious part or interesting part of the quantum theory. So the classically, classical scale invariance is totally destroyed at quantum level, often. Yeah. Often. Okay, um, so, okay, so let's see one well, correction for lambda term. So now for, you can see the flow from, go from lambda zero to lambda. When you go to capital lambda zero to capital lambda in the scale, when you change the scale like this way, the Kaplan constant lambda, small lambda, also flows. That's what renormalization goes for. Uh, okay. Um, okay. Somehow the connection is not that good. Um, okay. Um, Let me, um, let's see. I don't know how can I improve more, to be honest. Uh, so network is not good today, okay. I don't know how I can improve more. Um, Let's see, I just try to change the network. Let's see if it helps. Just tell me if it gets improved or not. Now I change the network a little bit. Please let me know if it gets improved or not. If it gets worse, I will bring it back. So just, uh, just tell me if it gets improved. Okay, so that's the... Um, so that's the uh, phi to the fourth term. And the question is, what's going to happen? Uh, so what's going to happen when uh, more general dimension, dimension of cold cut line? Um, so let's consider, let's consider, uh, consider term like uh, uh, BEX in Lagrangian, uh, or action, C, B, I. Operate, uh, operate the uh, inside the action S. So this is included action S, where the O B I is local operator, and it's, uh, C B I is a coupling constant uh, of of uh, the the coupling constant. Of uh, mass dimension um, B minus B. So I assume that the this operator has a mass dimension di, and then this Kaplan constant D minus di, so that the it counts out with the mass dimension D dx. Okay, so then um, like in in Fico theory, in Fico theory. By just simple dimensional analysis, one can just write down the dependence of the scale in the following way: C B I lambda um, lambda naught and plus some number, some number uh, lambda uh, D I over two. So this means the, the it's it's the first perturbation uh, first order in per perturbation theory. So here, lambda square is really the first order correction, uh, first order uh, quantum correction, lambda square. But in general, uh, if the operator has a di dimension, uh, the power becomes lambda to the di in first order correction. And lambda naught, and then uh, lambda d di minus. Lambda naught 
Plus, ah, uh, higher order correction, higher order correction. Or, uh, higher order means in this, this, this small lambda. I'm sorry about this capital lambda and small lambda. Um, you will understand in the context. Ah, uh, higher order quantum correction. That's, uh, so that's the, the so since the C has the dimension D minus D I, so this is the uh, the usual dependence, and this is the uh, the, the how the quantum equation uh, give you the the small coupling uh, small lambda coupling quantum dependence. So so this is just uh, expected from by, by dimensional analysis because of the it has the dimension D minus D I. And then, um, in our previous approach, it's useful to define a dimension less uh, coupling. So, G lambda, so this is dimension less, uh, CI, CI lambda, and then lambda CI minus D. Okay? So, this becomes dimensionless. Dimensionless. Uh, does it does it get better the um, does the internet flow gets better get better just tell me then uh, let's go gi the so gi of lambda can be written as gi lambda naught plus Number which should appear here, and then lambda di over two of lambda naught, and then lambda naught lambda. Uh, the R minus D minus 1 okay. and the plus of the two. and then okay, so that's what's uh, um, you can, how you can write the dependence. Um, I hope the internet flow gets better. Okay. Um, so, so this explain that this is also uh, the the. The consistent with dimensional analysis is what we did the last time. Um, in uh, provided and third perturbative, so it has the um, the scalings due to um, yeah. So the scaling is um, so if you have the chi of lambda is indeed and the scaling is a lambda naught. Of lambda uh, d minus d i, where so that come here is this is the mass dimension. This is uh, mass dimension uh, dimension of upper uh, c i uh, c e i. Okay. Um, and also uh, I, I'm going to erase this part uh, c i. So uh, CI of lambda sorry, can be understood as order lambda 
2i over 2. And then uh, lambda u minus t phi, which is much, much less than lambda u minus t phi. If you assume if lambda is less than 1. If the coupling constant small lambda is very small, this um, C, CDI, sorry, I think I should write that CDI. CDI here depends on order lambda to the di times uh, capital lambda d minus di, which is much less than um, um, d minus di, okay? So therefore, uh, this means that the, if, yeah, if, um, yeah, so the, if the um, CI is not a C, so therefore this means that the, um, if the CDI is non renormalizable Which means that the uh, d minus d i is less than uh, zero, less than zero. Then the the, the initial value, uh, initial value. is irrelevant irrelevant at scale um, lambda goes to lambda okay so that's what's going to happen um, right. so so if d minus di is uh, less than zero, uh, less than zero, so that the so here, um, so even if it's independent of this one, so this gi becomes really negligible. Okay. So so that the um, if you go to the capital the scalar capital lambda is less much or less than zero. So therefore this this the uh, the the C of the I, this this term becomes irrelevant. 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 When uh, irrelevant if the this term is non renormalizable. So that's uh, essentially what we did uh, in the last time by by power function. But this will something um, effective action also tell you that they, how this uh, <coughs> dimensional elastic coupling behaves under the scale capital lambda. And if the, uh, the this term CDI is non-renormalizable, so it's independent of uh, initial value of GI is irrelevant at the lambda is much less than the, uh, the high energy scale lambda D. So that you don't need to consider at the low energy for for um, non-renormalizable term. Okay. Um, so 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 therefore this means that the so so this means that the so normalizable term um, uh, coupling are. Irrelevant at IR, where is the super renormalizable coupling R relevant? So now 
therefore, uh, so we don't need to, uh, no, uh, we don't need to about the high energy theory so, um, so precisely. You, at the end of the day, if you go to the low energy, at the end of the day, so knowing about the low term, it becomes irrelevant okay, by, by, by this analysis. Okay. Uh, so, and also, um, the super renormalized term becomes relevant by this analysis. So, um, so at the low energy, so there's a only like a finite many term you have to be uh, consider. But uh, the, the the question is the classically the master term. So this this renormalized term in FIFO theory in FIFO theory lambda to the four factorial. So this is uh, renormalized. <laughs> so this has to be great here. Uh, has to uh, pay a lot. You have to pay a lot of attention for, for this dimensionless um, coupling constant lambda. Uh, so what we have seen that the at the first order quantum level, you get the low correction in the scale like that, uh, and the scale dependence. Okay? And then you have to be careful uh, when you uh, consider the quantum theory with this dimensionless coupling constant. Okay, so that's the essence of Wilsonian effective action, and I think uh, it's a good time to um, uh, it's a good time to take a break. But uh, just tell me if you have encountered the uh, network problems. I try to improve, hopefully, and then also. Um, um, if you have a question about the contents of lecture, just send me a message via via um, widget. Okay, let's take a ten minutes break. Thank you. 
Thank you. 
Okay, um, let's get started. Let's resume uh, the, um, the lecture. Um, <sighs> okay, so I changed the Wi-Fi, so I'm not sure if it improves the connection. Just tell me. It seems like today there is no question. Let me move on. So, <sighs> oh, by the way, um, so today we are going to cover chapter twelve. And then I just cover chapter 12.1. Um, and then we will move on. So we now understand it depends on the coupling constant, um, so that the coupling constant or parameter. In the region, uh, depend on scale. Um, so, uh, this, the last time uh, in the in the in the first part of the lecture, I just call it uh, capital lambda, um, but um, I change I will change the notation. To lambda to mu, indeed. Um, the reason is as follows: uh, scale um, you measure, uh, you measure, the scale we measure. At, okay. At which you measure, um, and then so how do so the what is the systematic way to, to find the dependence of this um, the question is what is the most uh, efficient way to find the dependence of the scale of this parameter in the Lagrangian and then um, to answer this question so essentially the idea is Wilson, uh, given by Wilson you just integrate out all the high um, <coughs> momentum mode to see the, uh, the dependence of the scale for the coupling constant, uh, dependence of coupling constant on the, the scale. Uh, but the, the efficient way to find uh, the, this, the, the dependence on the scale is uh, you need to uh, use so called Kalan semantic regression. Kalan um, um, semantic regression. Um, This is the topic of the second half of this uh, today's lecture. So to to do that, uh, there's a little, let us recall. So to introduce this uh, semantic equation. So let us recall that the last time so we imposed in the five for theory, uh, for theory. Uh, so we imposed a renormalization condition. Renormalization. Uh, renormalization. Condition, something like a uh, uh, m square, capital m square, p square, last time. So at the equal to zero and then equal to uh, b, 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 b square, m square, and p square, and p square is equal to m square, and also. Um, Lambda when s is equal to four m square um, and t zero equal to four. Okay. So we just impose this. This is a renormalization condition we imposed last time to find a uh, um, to, to 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 compute the what what is delta. Uh, um, Counter term and so on. 
So, um, so the first step to this kind of semantic question is to um, introduce so-called renormalization scale, renormalization scale on this uh, in, on this condition. So, so, so that the, so let's consider the massless Pfeiffer theory, massless Pfeiffer theory. Uh, which with Lagrangian is something like uh, one half special phi. Now I move back to Minkowski signature. Now that's all factorial phi Okay. Um, so this is very Lagrangian, which in the sense of the amount of zero to the um, So here it doesn't have a mass scale. Okay. Uh, there, there's no scale. There are no, the Lagrangian is independent scale. So, so that they, we can impose like a p squared is the n squared and so on. So, but uh, we can just impose, for instance, we can impose so called uh, renormalization condition in the spatial um, at p squared is equal to minus mu squared. So uh, it's the space like when the the moment that becomes space like you impose n square uh, capital n square is it, of course I, th I think remember I, I think that you you remember when p i um, p is equal to minus i n square p square as far as I remember and I hope this normalization is correct. Um, so that the, it's, it's a propagator, so you can just assume that P is a space-like. Um, and also the n square, the P square, is P square is equal to n square. Okay. Oh, sorry, sorry, no, 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 no. Minus mu square. Mu. So you just impose the renormalization condition like this way. In addition, you just have Impose a similar condition like like this one for massless theory. Okay. Equal to I lambda, which is the uh, essentially S P Q is equal to minus mu square. Of course, S is equal to P one. Um, And so on, and p in this case. So, so the condition one. So this is condition one. Uh, it used to be condition one, and condition two. So this is condition one prime, and condition two prime. So the so if you assume d d phi is again uh, by just renormalized by wave function renormalization phi zero, this means that the um, this implies that the, this is equal to um, um, so d four x. If you do the fully uh, transformation i p dot x. Um, Phi, I'm sorry, P, phi of x, uh, zero, um, psi, which at the P square is equal to minus mu square, is equal to I over P square. So this this first condition means that the, the this one prime means that the if you take the uh, the if you take um Fourier transformation two point function and the measure of the p square uh, is equal to space like my, like a minus n mu square. This is just the i over p square. Okay. So this is the condition. Mm -hmm. um, so in other words, um, um, so in other words, if you take the data mass. Uh, their field by zero of x by zero of zero uh, 
out the p square, the domain p square, this is equal to i z p square of the p square is equal to minus mu square. Okay. So therefore, uh, this means that the uh, it's not the residue. Uh, so this z, so here, so what I meant is that the here this z is a res, no, no longer the residue at the p squared. So this one is no longer a residue at p squared p squared equal to d. It used to be like this, it used to be defined like this one. But now, uh, it has the meaning that the, when p squared is equal to minus uh, mu squared, I don't think you can read this part. Um, so let, let, let me rewrite. p squared is equal to minus mu squared, z is the residue of this two-point function at the Fourier uh, transformation moment. Um, so that this is the first condition means. And second condition means as follows. So let me erase uh, this part, because we don't need this one anymore. Uh, so, so G, so last time we computed G4, uh, P1, P2, P3, P4, as follows, minus I lambda. This is what we have already computed uh, last time. Um, I minus I lambda square I D S I D T plus I D U um, plus order lambda Q and just bracket goes and times um, lambda P R. So this is the propagator. So this part is a propagator for for um, this bound. P1, P2, P3. Uh, and we have computed B for uh, in the last time. In the last time, I, I, mean, I can write down. And now, as follows. So they will compute the alpha lambda, uh, lambda. Oh my goodness, did I put the. Sorry. Um, uh, minus i lambda, sorry. Minus i delta lambda. Delta is counter term. And so delta, delta lambda is. Equal to minus i lambda square uh, three d minus mu square. Once you impose the two prime condition two prime. Okay. So s t u is minus mu square. It should cancel uh, delta lambda. And if it's v of lambda we compute last time, uh, which is v lambda square uh, two divided by v over q. Uh, dx, uh, dx, v of one. Now x is the final parameter. I can uh, two minus v over two divided by x one minus x um, mu square um, two minus v over two. And if you take uh, the, the uh, 40, uh, let's see, d equal to, d equals to 4 limit, or 4 minus epsilon, then what you will get is 3 lambda square, um, 16 pi square, uh, log 1 over epsilon minus log hmm, uh, plus pi. Plus uh, five. Okay, so the connection is not good. People keep mentioning connection is not good. 
So how many people are watching and how many people encounter the problem, network problem now? Can you just reply to me immediately? I'm waiting your reply now. Just, just tell me uh, you are encountering uh, uh, the network problem now. Oh. Oh gosh. I don't know, six, I don't know how many students are watching. <sighs> Is it okay? Can I move on? Or I just don't understand the situation. It seems like only one power is having problem and the other students are okay. Okay, you got stuck frequently. Oh, okay. Um. Okay, uh, I don't know, I, I'm not sure if I can improve. Okay, so now I, I again change the network, so hopefully it'll be okay. Um, so please refresh. Uh, Okay, uh, let me move on. Um, let me move on. Um,
Ok. So, so where we are. So we just start uh, the, the uh, consider the massless Bible theory. And we just impose a new uh, renormalized condition, renormalization condition, where we impose the space like moment at, at, uh, um, moment at p, where the space like moment at p is p square is equal to minus mu square, we impose uh, this renormalization condition. So here I just assume mu square. And this will give you the, uh, the changing of the, uh, the, the meaning of. This wave function renormalization for one prime, and now we are looking at the uh, the renormalization condition in Z, uh, two prime, um, and then try to compute uh, delta uh, lambda. Okay, um, then so if you look at this one, if you look at this term, as you can easily see, this is uh, the, this will give you the delta lambda. Is equal to uh, three lambda square, sixteen pi square, and one over epsilon can be replaced by uh, log lambda over mu plus pi over um, okay. And we already seen this this one, right? I mean, this, this this part. So. Last time, uh, in the first lecture, we just compute um, the, the, the effect of the integral out high uh, momentum mode, you get a correction like this one. So therefore, so here now, mu is, uh, it used to be the, the beta Lagrangian at this is defined at the scale lambda naught, and then you just integrate it till, uh, till lambda. So integrate out. So that's first lecture. Here, the, the, we did the same thing. In the, so the, you just replace lambda naught is lambda, and lambda is mean. It's a great confusing. So the bell Lagrangian is defined at the capital lambda, and in renormalization scale, you just you just introduce the scale you measure, uh, the coupling constant lambda, the small lambda, and you find the quantum correction at the one loop. And as you can easily see that the, um, even though um, at the plug everything back into here, uh, it's this the four point function of this lambda, small lambda coupling constant depends on the uh, the the depends dependent on mu. So so classical scale invariant, you can also see classical uh, scale invariants. Uh, is broken at quantum level. Because it depends, lambda depends on mu. Now lambda depends on the scale you measure at mu. Um, okay, uh, so let's see. The, the one step to the um, Carlos Matic equation, and let's move on to the Carlos Matic equation. So I'm very sorry about network, I don't know why, to be honest. Um, I cannot, it seems like, it, does it get better? Let me move the, what I can do is just, just change a little bit position and then also network a little bit. 
Does it become uh, fluent? Okay, so then let's move on to Khan's multi equation. So, so from here, what we have learned as follows. Um, let's consider the bare correlator or uh, endpoint functions. Um, so when you consider endpoint function um, zero, x1 equal to xn, which is something like a um, Consider that the Kalan semantic equation we call it, so essentially, so the Kalan semantic equation um, um, essentially call, uh, call it the dependence um, of G. Um, and for function and for correlator g of n x1 um, on the scale um, so there's there no longer zero here so this is uh, the it's it's a endpoint correlation function uh, defined by bare tail. Um, but um, of course this yeah so this this one is defined um, this one is defined you just define uh, the phi and um, you just from lambda until lambda uh, such that the uh, e to the i is not and the phi 1, uh, phi 0, x1, so phi 0, xn. So you just integrate 0 to lambda everything. So 0 to lambda, uh, the k is lambda. So now we are working like this way, the scale of the k. Um, we change the notation. Um, so therefore, so this uh, the bare correlator is independent of mu. So you just integrate everything, everything in terms of uh, bare dimension. So this is equal to mu. Um, okay. So, however. Um, so as I mentioned, so you can just redefine the field from there to the physical field, and also you can just redefine uh, the 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 action also depends on the the, the action the contains the Lagrangian contains the parameter coupling constant the parameter depends on the scale of mu. So we just want to see how this the correlation function. Uh, G depends on the um, the scale at which you measure. So to this end, so we just define the um, um, the G of x1 equals of xn, which is phi t uh, phi of x1 equals of phi xn with sine uh, omega, and where the phi of x is related by z on uh, half phi zero of x, and I forgot the minus sign here, uh, minus sign here. So now, so you move to the uh, physical field, phi, from their field, and also you just change everything 
in terms of a uh, meter, the e to e i s lambda, uh, not lambda, mu, the factor, and phi 1, uh, phi x1, will go phi x1. So this is a, uh, the, the correction function we are interested in. Okay. So now we just integrate from t to integral of lambda to mu. So the, now the the action is the effect with only effective action. Okay. So S not can be written in terms of bare Lagrangian, which puts coupling constant at lambda not m not, but now it's all the coupling constants renormalized. So, 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 so schematically, this depends on, of course, g x1 equal to xn, and also here it depends on lambda and m and mu. So lambda and mu is the, the renormalized coupling constant amongst it. Whereas here is g of theta x1 equal to xn, this depends on lambda naught, m naught, and also chapter 1. Schematically, so okay. Um, so as you can easily see uh, from here, so the, you need to define, redefine the, the physical field. So the g of x one modulus of x n and c is for n over two g n of zero and g of n of zero. Um, x1 xn because of this field group definition I will tell you um, so that so therefore the plug back into here you will get uh, the um, you will get um, um, plug back in here the mu is uh, you see minus n over 2 G theta um, x1. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. So just bring z into here and plug back into here. Okay. Then so uh, z n over 2 g x1 xn. And also it depends on lambda. Uh, which is implicitly lambda also mu okay. is equal to zero. Okay. And this can be written as follows. So just introducing the following quantity, uh, beta lambda is equal to mu uh, d lambda d mu. Now we already know lambda depends on scale mu. And also beta and square is equal to mu d mu. Uh, and square and gamma um, gamma of phi is equal to one half uh, mu I think one over z um, d, d, d log mu um, z so you just see phi like this way um, um, so, uh, this way, so this can be written in terms of forms. Um, this equation can be rewritten as follows. Mu, version, version, mu. Um, there. So this just to rewrite the dd mu acting on z and also dd mu act on lambda m and mu in terms of this virtual derivative, virtual derivative mu lambda m and derivative is just z and the, you just have the uh, the cost of the change of variable by beta and gamma. 
Um, this beta is just called beta function, and the gamma is often called uh, the normal estimation. Normal estimation. Uh, whose meaning becomes clear in the later part. In the later. How does the network? Is it better? I hope it's not better. Um, so the the power of Kalman semantic recursion that he allows, so the he allows this will allow us to compute a better lambda and better and square and gamma of phi. Perturbably, perturbably. You can determine, uh, can determine, determine beta and the gamma uh, perturbably. So that the, so essentially beta and the gamma encode how a coupling constant, uh, how a coupling constant depends on the scale of mu. We measure, okay. So that the computation, of, if you compute beta and gamma, you understand how the coupling constant, the parameter in Lagrangian, will depend on the scale. Of so let's look at the example in that case. Um, okay, so. So let's look at the example. Um, so the last time, so what we saw is that this, so let's look at FICO theory, for instance, FICO theory. Um, um, okay, so we have plenty of time. So in tuple function, uh, so and two point function, two point function. So uh, mu and the column semantic equation becomes partial partial mu plus beta lambda partial partial lambda plus two gamma phi. Um, um, Phi in G2 of um, G2 in G2 of G2. Um, so now, so I assume phi for two and massless and massless. Massless phi for theory. So I just look at the massless theory and square m is equal to zero and n is equal to two. Okay. Just look at this one. And the last time, so we assume that the, um, so we just compute n square of p square at one loop. And for two point function, one loop order. Um, so m, m square and p square, last time we computed, and then what we got is something like a, um, i lambda of uh, two. Now I'm just repeating the previous calculation. Uh, I think if you take the note, it's written in your note. Uh, gamma uh, minus p over 2 um, and square uh, minus p over 2 and plus i p square gamma z 1 minus uh, delta, oh, sorry, delta z of 1, delta z of 1. So this is what we have computed, and if you impose this real the condition I have written down, so this uh, p square um, So 
we can impo impose this one so we uh, so we can just obtain delta one of c is equal to zero. So um, from 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 right hand condition. So because it only depends p squared depends on q, so we get this one recursion of delta z is zero, and the delta n is equal to uh, this part. Okay, so this part. That's what we have learned. Okay. So this is equal to this. I'm not gonna write down. Okay. So that's for at the end of the drive back into here. So this is indeed drive back into here. This is indeed zero. So m squared of p squared is uh, over zero at one order for any for any p squared is any p squared. So this is the uh, so this is very special uh, special property property for binocular. So if you go to two loop order, all, of course depends on p square. M square p square depends on uh, p square. But if you look at the only one loop correction, it's independent of p square. This is very special. Uh, this uh, special property will tell you that the um, so special property tell you that the partial partial mu uh, g two at one loop is equal to zero, and also partial partial lambda at uh, uh, g uh, g two. At one loop is equal to one. So, um, so the gamma of phi is order one. So, uh, so this m squared is p squared is equal to zero means that the, it's, the g two is independent of the scale uh, is scale scale of mu. Okay. So now for the 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 dependence of mu is equal to zero and also the dependence of lambda is zero. Okay. Because it's it's uh, in any case it's independent it's over zero. Okay? Now for the normal dimension of one loop is just a, a nothing. So it's only received the correction. To, in a two loop order. That's what we mentioned. And also, um, if you look at a, a four point five function, um, since does the network get better? No, no, no. So we have computed the G4, a uh, four-point function. A uh, four-point function is uh, G4. We already computed uh, P1 over P4 is equal to minus I lambda plus minus I lambda square. And I, I just, maybe I have the rest down. Uh, there's I B T plus I B uh, S B U. Minus i double lambda um, plus order lambda cube. Okay, and then times uh, i p j square. That's what we have computed. Where delta lambda is equal to um, three lambda square plus sixteen pi square. Minus okay. We have computed. So now both is just let us evaluate the Kalman's uh, mathematics equation uh, in this background. So we 
you already know that the uh, dependencies, log dependencies, uh, mu dependence of log, so that the log cancel, so that the mu, partial partial mu, g, g4, okay, g4, g4, oh, oh, oh maybe down here, g4, uh, g4 is, of course, this is log mu, g4, which is equal to, um, I times per 16 times per um, so product of um, product of I P J square J J okay. and also you can just look at the um, you just you can just look at the um, the dependence of lambda by taking derivative uh, partial partial lambda g four uh, g four um, beta lambda is equal to um, minus i plus order lambda product of i p j Okay. Um, this is so sorry. I think we I think we could pay it So you just apply lambda derivative into here. Okay. So lambda derivative, so you get the minus i plus order of lambda and times beta lambda. Okay. And also uh, we know that the uh, gamma phi is only depend on all the lambda square. Okay? So now for if you just compare here, so you what you will find is that the um, yeah so so as you can see so this is all the lambda square right so all the lambda square but G4 depends on lambda it depends on uh, order lambda. So at the end of the day, so in total, you get the order lambda q. But if you look at the, the mu delta acts on g4, it's lambda square. The first, first order is lambda square. And also, you, you, so now you just compare between uh, this derivative and this, this derivative, and just compare between beta lambda and, then, and here. And then what you can see is that the, uh, this common semantic equation will give you that the uh, beta lambda is equal to 3 lambda square 16 times square plus order lambda cube. Um, the, do you understand? So, so gamma phi depends on order lambda square. That's what we found from two-point function. This order lambda square, but G4 depends on lambda, order lambda. So in total, it's order lambda q. But here, they can only they can also the lowest order is lambda to square. So they can compare. And if you compare them together to get zero, you have to set beta function lambda has to be three lambda square over sixteen pi square. So therefore, uh, this will tell you that the um, so this will tell you that the, uh, so this is equal to by definition lambda um, log So this will tell you that the uh, d lambda d log mu is equal to the c lambda square of 16 pi square And that's what we found in the Wilsonian action, right? The Wilsonian analytic action, so if we compare it over now, the log mu dependence, and if you look at the coefficient, this is exactly if you look at the coefficient uh, in front of log lambda over log mu, log lambda over mu, the coefficient is 3 lambda square plus over 16 pi square. Okay, so that's the power of the column semantic equation. And then uh, let me. 
that move on a little bit. So any, so how, how's the network? I mean, do you have a question? Today I haven't received any question yet. Um, so what time it is? I have two minutes. Okay, um, so does this mean see, you cannot listen to my voice or, I mean, I, I haven't received any questions so far. Uh, let, let, let me send a message. Um, Oh, okay, so you can now listen my voice. Okay, um, seems like at least you can listen my voice. Okay. Um. Good. So any question, just send me a message. Not too much. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry about the network. I cannot do anything, unfortunately. Still not so bad. Uh, not so good. Okay. Uh, I cannot. I think it's because of network of the school. Still not that good. Okay. Um, let me. In any case, let me move on. Okay. So let me move on. In any case. I'm very sorry, but I cannot do anything anymore. I I think I did all the all the I tried all the remedy, but it cannot be improved. So maybe you can watch the video later if you encounter the problem. Okay, so the computation. So, so we're interested in, in the how you compute the beta function for Maslow theory for dimensional coupling, uh, dimensionless coupling. Um, this is applicable for any um, any dimension. So for any dimension, uh, for uh, for Maslow's coupling. Uh, for instance, I mean, B equals to four in the five-four theory, Maslow's five-four theory. So, so beta lambda is one example. And another example in your homework, it's six dimension on the five. By Q theory, the coefficient is the massless coupling. So in any dimension, it's applicable. So so dimensional analysis will tell you that the um, 
tell you that if you consider uh, one pi or um, dp, uh, so this is i n equals to p, this by dimensional analysis it always has something like that dependent, something like that p squared log lambda. Uh, plus lambda. So that's what we, uh, by, by, by power counting, this diagram always has quadratic divergence with from the um, dimension analysis. That's what we have learned last time. Um, and then, so, so what we have, as we found uh, last time uh, in, the, in the example five of theory, so this quadratic divergence is absolute, absolute into uh, delta m, delta m part. That's, I mean, you can just check. You can just check in the, the five theory. So this is absolute in uh, delta m because it's quadratic divergence related to the last term, and then the log divergence related to delta t, delta t. Delta, delta t. Um, um, so, so, for instance, um, one can just check the two point function uh, GQP is something like that plus one loop, uh, one loop plus uh, the something counterpoint, something like this. Okay. Um, for delta z, uh, delta z, so that the um, and so on, and this can be re written as i over p square plus i over p square, and then so they just have a log divergence p square i some constant a. Um, log Lambda square, lambda p square, uh, plus finite, plus uh, times i p square. Um, and so this is one loop part. This is one loop. It's one loop dependent on theory. So if five of theory is just this one, as, as we learned. And this one is this one. And so the counter term is will give you the following. Uh, will give you um, counter term is something like a, so this counter term will give you uh, i over p square uh, i p square delta z i p square can you see this part? that's the Unfortunately, you cannot see it. Okay, let me write down in the table. Unfortunately, you cannot see it. So, this counter term, this plus, so just let me write down here. So, plus um, i over p square, um, so i p square delta z. Um, I P square. That's how it appears. So, Well, uh, um, what we can, uh, if you impose the uh, correct normalization condition, pre normalization condition, delta z can be understood a times log lambda square means square plus finite. Okay. So you, you just impose again, so this at one loop, uh, a p square is minus p square is equal to. Uh, zero or, or, or one, one pi, sorry, one pi is equal to zero. Then you get this this uh, the cancellation between 
in one loop and this delta c function. Okay. So that's the uh, you get the, this function. And you plug everything back into here, G2P is fine. And that's what we found last time. So for example, so mu dependence appear in the so plug everything back into here, the mu dependence in G2 appears in here. A lot, a lot delta z. Okay. And then, yeah, delta z. And so here, it also depends on coupling constant. Okay, depending on coupling masses, coupling constant. Uh, I think I should call it lambda. Lambda. Coupling constant lambda. This lambda is, I mean, so I, I never assume any dimension. So the lambda is not, not only the lambda in five-fold theory, but the, for instance, the sixth dimension on the five five cube theory, the coupling constant lambda. So uh, that's the um, assumption. And then so so then so what we observe is that the so the only dependence on Mu is uh, from delta z at one loop, and also uh, delta z is order one. So that's so therefore, so you just apply the car uh, at the leading order car semantic equation will give you that mu pressure pressure mu delta z. At the G two, um, sorry. Um, so you just apply, and then, so we assume. So we will see that the uh, beta function of lambda or always uh, is order lambda squared. So this we will, we will check. We'll see later. We'll see later. Okay, so this part we will see later. Um, uh, so let's assume this one. And then kind of semantic equation, you can just write down mu pressure pressure mu plus beta lambda pressure pressure lambda and then plus uh, two gamma phi and g two right g two acts on zero and as we as I explained to you, so beta lambda is all of lambda square. Whereas the G2 mu dependence come from only delta z, okay, delta z here. So you just apply, when you apply a partial mu onto G2, it directly acts on delta z, okay? And which is order lambda. So therefore, so at order lambda, you can just compare between these two. And so the being careful with the correct sign, Correct sign, so there's a you need to be careful about sign, and what you will get is minus mu pressure pressure mu delta z is plus two gamma phi is equal to zero. Okay. It's equal to zero. This means that the, so you have to be careful sign to get the minus sign here. So this means that the uh, anomalous dimension gamma phi is equal to one half. Um, partial uh, delta z uh, log z log mu and then this is equal to minus a so there's constant here okay so that, that's the massless theory uh, always the anomalous dimension is obtained by uh, the derivative with respect to uh, derivative of the Counter term delta z in terms of log mu, and you get minus a. Um, okay. So 
now, again, like a five volt theory, so we'll go to the endpoint function. Um, Um, so, so assume that this coupling lambda will give you the endpoint vertex. So, um, uh, let's see. so the four D in the D equals to four. This is something like a uh, something like this one for coupling, and D equals to three. You get the this one, and then, ah, oh, sorry, D, D equals six, sorry. So, so, um, so G, so for instance, the endpoint function, uh, the endpoint function at one loop will give you as follows, so G of N is equal to three level Plus one pi, one loop pi, one loop pi, plus pi four plus counter term. Uh, plus external x. Therefore, this will give you um. So this will give you the following. So the i over the product of j equals one to n i j square. So this is the external lag part minus i lambda. So this is three level, three level of minus i lambda and minus i b. So this dimensionless coupling, so that it's only appeared log divergence. Lambda square minus p square, and the complex term delta lambda, and also you have the uh, external lag coming from uh, this, this this diagram. So what we essentially the schematic diagram is something like an endpoint function we are considering. It's arbitrary and it depends on uh, dimensions, and this can be decomposed to one pi. Uh, sorry, three level, three level, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't know why. Um, so this is three level plus one, one loop, one pi, and the counter term, and plus the external lag. So what we are looking at them, this this type of diagram. Um, um, I'm not quite done everything. And so on. I'm not gonna write down everything. That's what the diagram will mean. And here you get the sum of j equal to 1 to n a j log for lambda square um, minus pj square minus delta d. Okay, um, so in general, so this is the case. Um, um, so this will give you the column semantic equation can be written as follows. Give me a question here. Uh, then, uh, so you have the beta lambda, partial, partial lambda, and then you have a bunch of anomalous dimension, uh, gamma r. Axon GN equal to PA. So here we assume that the, um, the yeah. 
So this is the Kalasmat equation, and we, we the assumption is that the uh, delta lambda and delta di contributes to uh, partial partial mu g2 uh, gn sorry gn, and also uh, we assume that the so. So namely that the partial, if you take the partial lambda g n, so the leading order is literally come from the, the here, here. Then everything else is depend on lambda cube term. No, no, not lambda cube, lambda, lambda square term. So namely that the uh, leading order is something like i uh, plus order lambda. Um, Product of i p j square j to the one to n. Okay, so this is the assumption one can make. So it, it's a similar assumption I made it here. Okay, so and then use this uh, assumption into this Kalman smart equation and use this form, and you will get as follows. So mu partial partial mu um, delta lambda minus lambda sum of delta di. Okay. So this is the only the, the mu dependence come from this counter term, and then uh, plus uh, beta lambda, okay, and then plus lambda sum of one half mu partial partial mu uh, delta di. So this is the, we just replace gamma i by this one. That's what we found here. That's what we found here. So this is, so gamma j, j, j is the one to n. So this is essentially equal to gamma j. It's equal to zero. Okay, so the, uh, So that the, since the, uh, as we found, that lambda is equal to minus p log mu square, uh, lambda square, and also delta ti is equal to uh, log ai, sorry. So as we found here, so this is delta, so when p square is equal to mu square, minus mu square, it absorbs into delta lambda. And also here, also uh, delta ti absorbs uh, the divergence here, the delta over here is just a delta j, a j, um, log lambda square, mu square, plus finite, plus finite. So therefore, beta lambda, beta function in massless theory, any massless theory can be written as follows. Um, massless theory. Okay. Yeah. So just combine them together. Combine them together is you get the delta lambda plus one half lambda sum of delta zi. Okay. Sorry. I think G, J, G one N, and this will give you. Minus two b minus lambda j to the one to n a j. Okay, that's what we found in the um, in the uh, in massless theory. Okay. So as we found b and a j in massless theory from coming from this the counter term delta lambda and delta zj. You can compute the um, the beta function of the this massless coupling down here. That's what we need. Okay. Um,
Okay, so that's what we found in this in this in the mountain thing. Okay. And you can also apply the same thing for for for, for um the QED indeed. So we can compute the better function for QED. So I think we let me end by just telling you how to compute the better function of QED. Um, any any question? Okay, I think, uh, yeah, I think uh, if you talk about the QED, it will take uh, like 15 more minutes. And also, I cannot go into detail. I think it's a good place to stop here. Okay, uh, I think uh, it's a good place to stop here today. Um, any question? Uh, just send me a message via WeChat. Uh, do you have a question? Um, if, if you don't have a question, I will stop here today. Somehow there is no question, I don't know why. Uh, maybe people just, um, they, don't want, they don't watch, I don't know. Or well, connection is too bad. I'm very sorry about connection. Um, or the content is too easy for you. I don't know, to be honest, like how many students are already watching the video. But I don't think, I mean, I, I can explain QED, but it takes 15 more minutes to finish, so I think it's better to stop. Okay, it seems like there's no question. Uh, let's finish now. Uh, and uh, if you have further questions, just send me a message via WeChat. Okay, bye bye.